Welcome to my show. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for having me, buddy. Thanks for coming by. I really appreciate it. I love this place. It's amazing. It really is. A lot of work. Awesome, awesome job. I wanted to have you by to share my house and garden and celebrate your your art because I've really appreciated you. You've been working hard for many, many years and I've seen your work for years and I, I really love it. Um, you're, you're just such a master at different ideas and the, would you call yourself a pop artist? I mean, I don't know what I would, I don't know. It's a category and I don't like categories, but it's probably the easiest the easiest way to, you know, explain what I do. If you need to like, you know, some one punchy term, yeah. It is silly to put, you know, but just to try to get an understanding yeah. of what your, tell me about your process. What There's so many different things I do that, I, you know, it's, it's hard to explain a process. But, you know, for these, these are all kind of, this is a new idea that is sort of recycled from an old idea and using a, a friend's or a, someone who I admire's idea and kind of flipping it on its side and doing my own thing with it. So this, this piece specifically, <clears throat> you know, I don't even know if I've titled it. I think it's just called like factory piece. And it is an homage to Andy Warhol, pop artist, you know, extraordinary and a definite inspiration and influence for me um, over the years I've made several uh, separate portrait pieces homages to Andy and peripherals of his factory scene uh, and later on like with Jean-Michel Basquiat I made a piece called the symbionts and that's with this these colors right here and uh, I, uh, earlier I had made a piece called uh, The Factory. It's actually called The Factory. And then in parentheses, I want to be a robot. And it's Edie Sedgwick superimposed with uh, Maria from the Metropolis movie, Fritz Lang, 1928. I, I love that movie. Yeah. So that's a piece, and that was this grayscale gray pieces that also had one side that had this gold. I don't know. So I guess I'm... I'm not, I'm, I'm going on a tangent. Um, so these pieces initially were a part of my pop hybrid series. So yes, I guess I'm a pop artist because I even title one of my main series pop hybrids, right? Mm -hmm. So those were separate pieces that have existed for years. Um, the series began as a painting series, hand paintings on acrylic, can you know, acrylic paintings on canvas that I would then resin coat. And over time, it transitioned into becoming a limited edition print series. And that's where these came in. Um, they were 12 by 12 inch editions. The, just the, the substrate, the metallic photos that I would then apply to the cradled hardboard and then resin coat. That's what these are made of. So I took them and cut them into traditional uh, triangle, um, quilting triangles. Right, I can see that. So the idea for that came about, and it kind of coincided with this, um, I was sort of interested in, in collage in the past couple of years. And Joey Veltkamp, you know, was making these wonderful quilts and had, uh, had a show at Greg Casera, and he calls them soft paintings. And I loved that. And I wanted to give a little nod to Joey and kind of flip that idea. And so I was like, what's the opposite of a soft painting? Hard quilt. So that's <laughs> basically what this idea came from. So these are, there's a hard quilt sub-series of the pop hybrids. And so that's what, that's what this piece is. And I included some uh, chrome mylar to uh, sort of allude to the silver factory and I tucked in a Lou Reed piece in there. It's just kind of, he's alone by himself. The, the other ones are repeated chunks of, uh, of larger pieces, but that's the only Lou Reed. So I don't know if anyone else has noticed that, but uh, that's essentially it. 
Yeah, so, so what I do is I, I cut these all into, and this was like a failed pop hybrid piece to begin with. It was, I don't know what happened to it. I can't remember what it was. But, so I take these 12 by 12 pieces, I glue them to the surface, and then I resin coat it. And hopefully that's it. It's really great. I just love the color. It's really dynamic. You have, you've, you've always been really good at the graphic side of things. Thanks. And really make things um, rich and, and contrasty and punchy, fresh. Thanks. It's just uh, Thank you. these colors. Are this I really love the, this this color and then the the monochrome, the, the black and white. It, it it's really cool. And Thanks, the way man. that you I think it works. It really works. It's, and it's really like a, strong. It's like a she, like a, you know a chevron motif, but it also kind of reminds me with these silver pieces that it almost is like teeth <laughs> when i see it at, in a distance i see teeth and it's almost like this mouth consuming this information pop pop world pop art world so how are you uh, cutting the the pieces just by hand with exacto knife uh, straight edge nice yeah. you're, you're always really good with your Material. I try to be precise, but like we were talking about earlier, you said you were you admired my uh, resin pouring skills, and on these I'm trying to be looser about it and be okay with uh, imperfections and, and, and anomalies because I can see in the light right now that there's some weird I don't even know what you call it. You know, it's like the oil on water look. Mm -hmm. What's do you have a term for that? The sheen. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, a weird oily sheen. Yeah. But I'm okay with it. And like a couple of these edges have poked up through. They've come apart from the, from the adhesion. But it's okay because it's, it's, you know, I, I made it. I'm a human. It's been difficult for me from the start to like step away from something unless it's absolutely looks like it came out of a factory, a literal factory. So I'm, it's been taken years to be okay with showing people stuff that is not like, you know, necessarily buttoned up perfectly. Right. But that is part of your process is to be, to have it kind of, um, kind of mechanical almost. Almost, yeah. Like I, over time, especially with this series, I've worked at removing myself from the work, you know, step by step. Like I wanted to kind of just step away from the work and not have my hand in it or as little as possible because I feel like the idea really, especially for this work, these pieces, the idea is the work, <laughs> really. It's like the idea of the merging of these two images or, or personalities or ideas, whatever, and creating something new from that. That's, for me, that's what the piece is. It doesn't necessarily matter how it got there for me. Like it could have been done by hand, but you know, when I was doing it by hand, I was doing it to the point of, I want you to think it's done by a screen print or something, right. you know? So I was like, why not just <laughs> step back, turn it into a digital process. I was creating them digitally, you know, I was uh, composing them digitally to begin with from the get-go. So, yeah, it just, uh, it's, ev it's evolved over time and there's still uh, interest in them. So, and there's still interest in them in, from me, like I'm still interested in, in, in creating them. So, thanks for, thanks for you for having interest in them. Oh yeah, they're great. And I, I, I think you're, um, really to be commended for, you, you're always trying, uh, you know, new things. This seems to be, you know, you're really successful with those last pieces, the last series, and this is just a bold step that, that seems so Thank great. I, and, you know, I still really enjoy those, those other pieces, but this seems to be, you know, maybe a little more painterly. Yes, I um, agree. Yeah, it is. Instead of having one image um, and, and, but this, this is sort of broken up into, you know, pieces. Um, so you're doing printing? You're, you're printing these out? Well, the, the, the pop hybrid pieces are printed on and have been for quite a while. They've been printed on metallic uh, photo paper. 
But that's also evolved. <laughs> because for probably a good part of 10 years, I was having all of those pieces printed that way as chromogenic prints on metallic photo paper. Um, but the technology for doing larger sizes became obsolete in, with the advent of like, inkjet printing and laser jet printing and, and, and stuff like that. Like, they didn't need to have photographs that are 48 by 48 made anymore. So when the machines would break down, which were the size of this room, you know, sometimes in some cases, it was like $100,000 to fix it. You know, and so these places, these printing places, printing houses got to the point with this particular uh, technology where it was just not cost effective to keep doing it. So they stopped and I couldn't find anybody else to do it. So instead of, so what I would do is have them print and mount these pieces. I would pick them up, mount the back frame, resin coat them. So after these places stopped printing at that size. I was like, well, let's see what happens with the inkjet print, right? So, pardon me, I'm getting dry. So, coincidentally, I had a friend at the gym who happened to own a printing business, said he would try some tests for me, and we did some tests, and the resin reacts really bizarrely to inkjet prints, especially at that size for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but I, I couldn't get it to work. Like, I just couldn't get it. It wasn't just bubbles. It was, like, just strange textures within, like, on the surface of the print. And it, I just couldn't get it to work. So he talked me into trying this plexi print process where they take archival plexi and archival print and sandwich them together and it pretty much mimics the look of resin on the print anyway <laughs> so we, I was like yes let's do that so that's what I do at three of the sizes in the series now is they're mounted on Sintra still uh, printed on metallic photo paper still but inkjet printed instead of a photographic process where it's developed um, and then it is sealed with uh, one eighth, one eighth inch uh, plexi, and it's slick as hell. <laughs> it is slick, <laughs> and it's beautiful. I Thanks. Mean, it's, you've, I like how you've really innovated. You, you've really, you think a lot about your process, and you really are deliberate about how you put things together. Tell me about celebrity and ego. <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess I've just, as, since I was a little kid, I was just fascinated with celebrity and TV, you know, growing up in suburban America. It's, you know, TV sort of raised me in a way. <laughs> no, nothing against my parents. They were around, but I mean, I was, you know, very into what was happening on the TV. And those people were fascinating to me. And I had older siblings that were quite a bit older, and they had... Um, you know, fascinations of their own and obsessions of their own. I, I kind of come from an obsessive type family. <laughs> we, we are all very, uh, we get focused on something and we become hyper focused and learn everything about it and collect everything we can about it, that type of thing. That's how I was as a kid and that's how I've kind of always been. And I think I kind of grew up maybe wanting to be a pop star, you know, but I didn't have that talent. I had a talent, I had a visual art talent, so I, 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 I think I steered my aspirations uh, into, you know, making art and then, you know, getting older and, and seeing the superstar artists, you know, like, you know, Andy Warhol and Jeff Koons and Salvador Dali and, the, you know, the people that you kind of, oh, that's, oh, oh, as you're growing up, you know, you're discovering these masters and then you know then you do like begin to study the true masters and go back and but yeah I mean personality is is a part of and it almost bothers me how much personality seems to be part of uh, artwork and collecting art and 
maybe sometimes um, creating art, but I, it, um, I feel like it doesn't really matter <laughs> what my personality is or if you like me or not. If you like what you're looking at, it doesn't matter who made it, you're going to live with it. So the, the, the trading of personality and, and that kind of stuff has always sort of turned me off about you know the art world art scene and I think it sort of made me turn inward so about ego I don't know what do you want to know about ego well it's interesting that you you're attracted to these big yeah these big egos these these you know very creative masterful yeah, people um, I get, yeah. you know you've done some really cool stuff with Prince and I really like how, you know, your choices of who to appreciate, yeah. whether it's a musician. Thank or you for noticing that. I mean, your choices are great. And I Thank think, you. I'm like, wow, I love that artist too. And I, you know, but sometimes, are, you know, you're, you're let down by a personality. Like, you know, Salvador, sure. as a child, I loved Salvador Dali and was just a huge, I had a bunch of books by him and loved Salvador. Salvador but, you know, then learning that he was kind of a fascist, you know, politically know. and, you know, in the Franco regime and, and you, you know, as a person, he maybe was slightly shallow, or, yeah. you know, and you, that contrast between the, the, the outward. That's, that's sort of what I'm saying about like, I wish it wasn't so connected, but you can't help but separate it once you know something. And, but it, and like with Prince, for example, my biggest inspiration, biggest influence became really, uh, you know, locked into this Jehovah Witness dogma. And that broke my heart for years, you know? It's like the dude inspired me to fly my freak flag and be whoever the hell I wanted to be, dress how I wanted to be, do what I wanted to, you know? And, th but, and then he like became this <laughs> really narrow-minded man in his 40s and it, it was really disappointing. But you have to like somehow, and it's still difficult, separate the artist from the art if the art is important enough to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. If it's not, then walk away, I guess. But like for Prince, I, I, I want to believe that he like came back around to understanding that freedom is the way and the only way to be. But um, I still have these memories, uh, these experiences that are wrapped around his music or his artistry that were never going to go away and they can't be changed by who the man is. So, you know, <laughs> I'm going to tell a weird story here though because it's really connected to this. So, you know, on social media, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I've been active on social media for many years. And I've got kind of a fan base and a collector base, you know, small collector base that I don't, I've never met in, or across the country or wherever. And a woman that I had be, it befriended me, I don't remember if it was before or after Prince died, because there's, <laughs> there's BP and AP. Um, but she had collected like four pieces of four 12 by 12s and she was really into my work. She was always complimentary. She's funny. We had a kind of a rapport back and forth, blah, blah, blah. Things started taking a turn for, you know, the weird around 2016, November, when somebody gets elected president. And, you know, I start to, over the years, over the, you know, those four or five years, I start to see these posts. It seems like she's becoming a conspiracy theorist. She's getting really, it seems like, well, she's queuing on now, you know, and it's just like getting really weird. And so I like unfriended her. Well, apparently she had, I don't know, she like immediately knew and she's like, you unfriended me? What the, why, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, look, it's just like, it doesn't mean anything. It's just like, we can't really be friends. Like I can't call you my friend. It doesn't feel right to call you my friend when I see how you are, and I'm not even going to try and change your mind, you know. And she insisted on sending her art back to me. So I was like, okay. 
And it was just, I was like, just taken aback by how intertwined her ability to enjoy my work was with who I was or how I treated her. It was interesting. It still is interesting. Interesting is not a very descriptive word. It's, it was sort of disturbing, you know, to be honest. And it's still kind of, I feel badly in a way, but at the same time, I'm like, that's nuts. Anyway. But you, put, you point out a really good dynamic there when you as a person, we have certain uh, experiences and we've come up upon this world in certain ways. We've learned certain defense mechanisms, you know, the way we dress or, you know, do your hair or, you know, and someone could love that or they don't love that or, you know, and they're ju everybody's judging, judging and there isn't a lot of, uh, you know, Zen about, you know, knowing that people are human and we're trying to do the best that we can. Um, but it is, it is greatly disappointing. I have a, I had a really good friend that we spent a, a bunch of time with and he kind of went to the dark side. <laughs> uh, and I couldn't respect someone that would vote for Donald Trump. I, I, it was really hard for, I mean like, the guy is a sweet guy. He makes nice art. He's been very cool to me, but I, I just, that level of hate and racism yeah. and oppression and, and oligarchy and the, the rest of it, you're kind of like, wait a minute, I, 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 and you can't change someone's mind. No, you can't, you and can't. You try to have a, 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 some kind of discussion point with them, um, you know, or, or, you know, someone like Charlie Kraft where, he was kind of a nice, nice guy. He was nice to me. I never and, actually met him, but and I tr and I tried to say, well, you can't really be serious yeah. about this Nazi stuff, right? That's horrible. Like, you, you know, that that's really, <laughs> yeah. really about as bad as yeah. it could get, right? <laughs> yeah. And so you're just kind of joking, right? And he he would he never really said he was joking or huh. you know. And so it it it, it is troubling when someone really goes against your values and someone goes to, to a place where you know they'll talk about sexism or racism or homophobia and you say i just i don't want to be a part of that yeah and something like social media where everybody's kind of you know kind of very combative oh man it got bad it got real bad in the you know a couple of years there it's it's kind of still bad it is still bad you know and you know, I, I, I don't understand how someone could feel that the Ukrainians wanted to kill themselves, right? <laughs> and, you know, it's just it, it, like, I, I don't understand where someone could make all these wonderful critiques about capitalism or oligarchy, and then their their decision was, is to support a dictator. Yeah, what and, the hell? I mean, I'm kind of like, I, I don't yeah. understand how people draw together those kinds of ideas, yeah. but you know, bringing back to art, I think that I do like the fact that you're, you know, you're interpreting these celebrities, you're interpreting people's dynamic power, and and I think you kind of realize that, you know, you know, people are, are just people, but right. they've been they've gotten on the escalator, yeah, yeah, and they've gotten they've gotten totally. a lot of fame and. Some people are pumping them and, yeah, and yeah. doing well. And you, it is attractive, like these beautiful, rich, fabulous people that are amazingly talented. And you think, wow, you know, I, I could be that way. But you're such a sweet guy, you know? <laughs> and you're, you don't seem to be a shallow person. You, you seem to be, there's a lot of good inside your heart. Thank you, man. And, Can and you see that? Thank you know, you. I, I mean, you're, you've always been a sweet guy, and and I I don't think you would push yourself on anybody, I you know. know. And I I, you're just trying to. to make great art, which you're you're really good at. Thank and you. And I'm I'm glad that you you just keep reinventing and developing and mining that creative spirit. Thank you, man.
You know, with the with the with the celebrities and the choices I make and, and, and that kind of I think what that is is a way for me to express who I am in a way. It's like it's almost like they're paints in a way, you know, on a palette. And over time, you know, who knows? Stepping back from it, you'll be able to maybe figure out who I am as a human being by who I admired, maybe. Following the breadcrumbs, yeah, back right? to who you are, yeah. Because a lot of the folks, like you mentioned, you know, I, there's you know like Prince and like Picasso, and there's certain you know work ethics or just the belief in just following, like Eve Klein. You know, he was ridiculed, but he's like the most mind-blowing genius to me. Like he cracked it, like the immaterial. We're here now. It's like. NFTs. He created the NFT, you know, but like those people who like are like integrity, like they follow their path no matter what, and they're just going to do it, you know, and you're either going to come along or get off the bus. And I just feel like that is so powerful and it is so, you know, admirable and respectful, you know, and I just want to be like that. So that's why I choose these people because, uh, you know, I aspire to be like that. But at the same time, I don't know that you need to be shallow or, yeah, or push yourself in front of people to, to get attention. Um, I guess I've always been the quiet kid in the back, like drawing, you know, dreaming of something larger. Yeah, imagination is, is, is really fun how it can, um, you know, kind of fuel this, this outward, uh, this direction. And what I always love is the artifacts that are left behind from that journey. Yeah. You know, art is sort of like, it's a, a specific thing in time and space, right? You did it this, this yeah. year and this time and you're going through these experiences totally. and you had these materials and like you say like something you know the machine broke down yeah. and so you went in another you know like i made a giant piece and and it was just too big so i had to cut it up you know and, it, and i had to learn how to cut it up it was right. so thick and so big and so hard to cut and i learned how to cut it and then i you know i, I kind of you know you just you let the wave you got to follow take. the path, man. If it's if it's a strong enough string that's pulling you, right? You're going to follow it. And so I can't imagine. So you probably cut up that first piece and you're like, "Oh, I can do this." And then you started cutting everything up and creating <laughs> towers out of them. You know, it's 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 great. It's amazing. That's the true like I don't know, tapping into that. Someone asked me if I felt like I was uh, tapping into the divine when I'm creating and I you know I kind of balk at that because I'm not a religious person at all and I have no you know true belief system at all except for I don't know <laughs> and so I was like I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't you know verbalize it as such but I do feel like I am you know once I do get and I know you feel this too once you get on that path on that zone or whatever it's like time is what happened right and that's amazing and that's the feeling that's the drug I think that we're always trying to like chase right um, and that's what it's been for me anyway I agree I'm, yeah. I'm not particularly religious but if there if I adhere to any religion it's just the religion of art <laughs> it's always growing it's always changing it's it's you know, if you if you follow whatever it is, whatever approach, that's why I just love all kinds of different art. Because if you if you, you see someone following a strain, a line of thought or reason, and they and to see what they come up with when they're just where are they going? That that is a real religion, and I think yeah, we're adherents of a religion that is. It's a really a beautiful religion because it, it never is static. It never is always frozen. Growing. It's always growing, and it's you know anybody can do it. There's no yeah. the club is open to that's, anybody that's that true. follows the rules of production. 
<laughs> you make, you keep making no matter what. Yeah. And you have to really question any limitation. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Couldn't put it even better than that. Yeah, you have to question every limitation. That's perfectly, perfectly said. Well done. So is there any, anything else you want to share about y y you as an artist or your approach, art well, making or your... I mean, you asked me to come and bring a piece, a, a big, good sized piece. And uh, I, don't, I don't think you've been to my place, but it's probably as, could fit it all right into this building. Um, so I don't have very many pieces that are large scale, but I have many small pieces. And I kind of go from one thing to another like this is, you know, one series, but then I was thinking I was going to bring some pieces from another series where I'm using resin again, but um, I'm using mylar and cardboard and, and uh, stuff that people use maybe as uh, support or uh, protection and I'm creating these shields out of them and then coating them in resin and like imbuing them with symbology and, and they're kind of meant as talismans against whatever, like, you know, the world right now. But they're also like families or people like cleaving together and, you know, we're battered and kind of bruised and beat up, but we're still shining and we're together. And so I was thinking I was going to bring some of those pieces, but maybe next time. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I guess I'm all over the place here and in the studio all over the place. So... <laughs> well, I think that's good. Yeah. I mean, because you can, I don't think it's scattered at all. I feel like there's a really clear. I don't feel like it's scattered, but I, I, I wonder what perspective is sometimes when, you know, you know, based on, solely on my social media posts. But, you know, that's my output. It's like, you know, I post as I make. So it's pretty accurate, I guess, visual diary. That's the coolest thing about social media, I think, is that you have this timeline. You can like go back, oh wow, look what I made last year at this time. Well, thanks, Troy. I appreciate you coming by and sharing your, your art. And it's, it's been great to have you. Thanks, man. I really appreciate you having me and showing me your space. It's amazing. And this was really fun. Thank you. Thank you.